Hi, and welcome to this ultimate guide for creating a glitch sound effects. In this video, I'll be showing you nine different ways to create glitch sound effects from scratch, and I might also throw in some uh, bonus ways at the end. But we're gonna start off simple, and then we're gonna kind of grow in complexity and adding more to our technique as we go along. So with that said, let's get right into our session. All right, so here we are inside of Reaper. And before we just get started here, if you haven't checked it out yet, I have a gift for you. It's my sound designer starter pack. It's a sound pack of over 900 sound effects that you can use royalty-free in your personal projects as well as commercial projects. So if you're interested in picking that up, make sure to check the description. All right, let's get into it. So like I said here, we're gonna start off super, super simple and super easy. And that's gonna be by using any kind of, uh, any plugins by Glitch Machines. Here are two of their free ones. First off here is Fracture. And here it's, it's basically a, a plugin of three effects here. You have your buffer up here. Here you have your filter and this bottom section here you have a delay. The way I like to use it to keep it simple, I like to bring my dry wet knob here all the way up to 100% and I like to press the question mark here which is going to randomize all of our parameters here. And of course you can do the same thing with their other free plugin here. This is hysteresis. Again same thing here. I like to put my dry wet knob all the way to 100% and here they actually have a random button where you can randomize these three parameters. So why don't we just have a listen to what this can sound like. And there you have it. Now what's great about this technique is now I can just go up here in my global sampler that I have here and I can just grab whatever I just sampled, whatever I just created. I can drag it in here. Also what I like to do is drag it sometimes into a sampler and then just kind of sample, chop them up and, and sample it that way. So that's gonna be a technique we're gonna use a lot throughout this video. I'm not gonna show you all of it here, but just so you know, that's kind of the, the process I would go through. So like here I had a little design clip here that I had that I really liked, I could have it here. I like this little section here. So I might want to cut that out. And now I can export that as a little glitchy effect here. All right, one of my favorite plugins that they have here, uh, Glitch Machines, is Palindrome. And this is a really cool sampler. And there's actually four samplers here that you can input into here. And you just put in some sound files. And again, same thing here at the bottom left, you have the question mark. And you can randomize kind of pretty much any parameter inside of here. So let's just have a listen to what this can sound like. All right, next we have a sequencer by Glitch Machines, which is called Tactic. Again, this is a similar idea. It's, instead of being able to play it across your keyboard, you're basically are, are gonna be playing it on in your DAW. So I have to press play here, and then we should be getting some pretty cool sounds here. All right, let's move on to one of my favorite techniques to use with glitch machines, and that is to use Fracture XT with just a sine wave, or it could even be any kind of sample that you want to load in here. I'd like to start off with just a sine wave here, and I'm just going to, again, bring my wet dry knob all the way up to 100%, and this is going to be able to generate really cool sound. So I'm just going to print this out, record, and let's hear what we can create. <laughs> All right, so with that, I have this nice long file here that I can go back into, chop up, or just put in a sampler and then chop up and, and create some nice, cool, glitchy sound effects from that. All right, let's move on to number two here. And this is gonna be to use plugins that have kind of built-in glitchy effects already into the plugin. So let's have a look at what those could be. All right, so the first plugin I have set up here is Portal by Output. And this is a pay plugin, but inside of here, you have a lot of cool presets. And one of the categories of presets here is you have glitchy. And inside of here, you have a ton of like glitchy particle and granular effects that you can play with. So let's have a listen to what this can do to your sound. So here I just have a little whoosh sound effect. So let's have a listen. All 
right, let's move on to our next plugin here that I like to use for glitchy stuff. This one is Avocado Glitch Ducking Plugin. This is native inside of Reaper. So if you have Reaper, this one's going to be a really great plugin for you. And as it suggests, it's just a, a glitch generation plugin. So I'll just quickly go over some of the settings I have here. But basically, my mix is at 90. Uh, here I have your repeat uh, percentage. This is how likely is it going to repeat? How likely is it going to pitch modulate? How likely is it going to reverse here? So these are all up a little bit because I want it to be pretty glitchy. So let's have a listen to what this can create here. And there you go. With just that, you can generate a ton of kind of effects and based on whatever you feed it through, um, you're going to get some pretty cool sounds. All right, so here are some other uh, ones that I like here. Uh, one is stutter edit. Again, this I like to put on something like a sine wave and then kind of just generate these cool kind of gestures. Another one, I don't actually have this one, but I've heard a lot of good things about it, is effects tricks by Sugar Bites. And that's another one where you can use uh, to create and generate just a lot of cool kind of glitchy sound effects. All right, let's move on to number three here. And we're still kind of in that similar vein where it's kind of still simple. And this one is going to be using multi effects. So multi effects um, is basically a, a plugin that you might have that has multiple different kind of effects all kind of built into it. All right, so let's have a look at the first one that I've picked out here. And this one is Amalgame by In-Ear In -Ear Display. <laughs> All right, let's move on to our next one. Next one here, I'm gonna do the same thing, just a sine wave, and the plugin itself is called Infiltrator by Devious Machines. So this one's really cool because you have a ton of presets and you can basically load in a lot of uh, plugins and effects at once, and then you can modulate them and everything, and it's really great just for creating these kind of crazy sounds. I'm just gonna show you uh, some different presets and then also just randomizing, going through different presets and see what kind of, how it can affect your sound, especially for just a simple sine wave and, and what kind of sounds you can create with that. All right, here I have another multi-effect unit. This is Tornado by Sugar Bites, and it kind of does some similar stuff, but a bit differently. So here I have a little sound effect I have from my Steampunk sound pack. Let's put it through with this. All right, and here's another multi-effect unit that you could get. This one is called Biome by Unfiltered Audio. What I like to do with this one is just kind of add a ton of different effects here. So for example, here I added a bunch of granular effects. That's all these green ones here. So what you can do now that you have all these effects in place is just randomize all of their parameters. So here I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna make the depth a lot bigger so that the randomization is more obvious. And let's just have a listen to what this can sound like. All right, let's move on to number four, getting a bit more advanced here. This is RPM, which stands for Random Parameter Modulation. So there's a different ways you could do this. I'm gonna show you how to do it inside of Faceplant. All right, so here we are inside of Faceplant. And what I have set up here is just a wavetable here and I'm modulating it with a random LFO. I have a bunch of other random LFOs here that I now want to assign to any of these parameters inside of these effects that I've loaded in here. Now, what's great about this technique is that you can pretty much load any effect and you're gonna get different results every time. So what I'm gonna do now is just assign these random parameters, random LFOs to these parameters, and then we'll come back and listen to what we created. All right, so here we go. Let's have a listen to what we've got. Now what I've also done up here with the mod wheel is assign the mod wheel to the speed of the LFO. So now I can, with one mod wheel move, I can like affect the speed and how fast all these changes are gonna happen here. All right, so I can get some cool glitchy ch textures that way. Another thing I can do here is add an LFO complex. Let's use this one. Now let's assign this to the pitch here. Let's see what we got. Now we have another cool sound here. So again, here, I'm gonna assign this to the speed, this macro to the speed here. So now I can control it together. And now let's have a listen to what kind of person. <laughs> All 
All right, so with that, I can create a whole bunch of different glitchy textures and gestures with this technique. Now, like I said before, um, just put in your own kind of effects and stuff in, it, in, in their own kind of cool, unique sequences, and you're going to generate a whole ton of different kind of sounds. So that's what's fun about this technique here is that you can be creative with, how you're, with what you're layering and, and what effects you're using because it's always going to be a little bit different. All right, let's move on to number five here, and that is going to be to use artifacts. So artifacts can be created in a few ways. One way is when you're doing time stretch. So here I have a sample of me just yelling and doing some creature-like sounds for a sound effect I wanted to create. <laughs> Sounds cool. Now, an easy way to create artifacts and some glitchy sounds is just by stretching this out really far. And with that, you can create some cool digital and artifacty sounds. Of course, if you want, try out different algorithms for stretching out the sound, and you're going to get different results. Another way that you can get some cool artifacts is by using something like uh, D-Click by RX by Isotope. With this plugin, what it's going to do is it's going to try to remove any clicks that it finds in the sound file. But what we can also do is just output the clicks only. And with that, you can get some cool glitchy sounds. So let's have a listen. All right, let's put it back a little bit more. Maybe reverse the file. All right, so that's another way you can create some cool artifacty glitchy sounds. They're a bit more aggressive, but they're really fun. All right, let's move on to number six, and this is going to be to use the Chernobyl button inside of LKC Variator. So for those who may not know, this is a Reaper-specific um, script that you can have. It's free, and here it is right now. And it has a Chernobyl button here, which is basically going to mangle up your sound, your audio files inside of your Reaper um, session here. So what I have here are a couple of files of me uh, yelling and doing like creature sounds. <coughs> Just like that. So I'm just going to grab all of these here and I'm going to hit the Chernobyl button. And now it's just going to chop them up and add fades and a whole bunch of different effects. And now you should get some cool sounds. I mean, just with that, you could probably use to uh, uh, to sample and create glitch effects. If you want to do even more though, I like to grab it again and just hit it again and see what kind of sounds we can get. And there you go. So try that out with different sound sources and you're going to get different results that are really interesting. All right, let's move on to number seven. And this is going to be to use granular synthesis. So my granular synth of choice is usually Pad Shop. And this is by Steinberg, uh, which also made Cubase and Nuendo. So in here I have loaded in a little spell sound effect. Sounds like this. All right, so that's the spell sound effect. So I loaded that inside of here, and now what I can do is I can just play across uh, on my keyboard and get some cool sounds, and then I'm just going to move some different parameters here, and we'll see what we can do. And there you have it. The sounds are a bit more grainy, a bit more aggressive and granular, but if that's what you're going for, this can be a great way to create those kind of glitch sound effects. All right, the next technique is probably my favorite technique in terms of creating sound effects and just glitchy sounds in general, and that's using what I call my sound design sampling technique. So it's basically when you're just printing out a long file, kind of like this one here, and you're just printing it out with a ton of kind of uh, gestures and effects that you can then load back into a sampler and then sample those sounds. So I've already kind of shown you how to do that inside of Faceplant. Let me show you another way that I like to use it. All right, so here we are inside of Reactor, and the other way that I like to use this technique is using something like Ultraloop. I think Loop Mix or Loop Cloud or something like that has, has a similar plugin that they've recently released at the time of shooting this video, and it basically does a similar thing. So basically, you're loading a ton of samples in here. I have 127, and now I can go into here and randomize this sequencer. This is a sequencer up here. It also has effects that you can trigger on and off, and um, yeah, you can also load different samples and, and play different samples at the same time. So let's just have a listen to what it can do and what it sounds like. Right, so with that now, I have this huge sample file here that I've, I can I can go in and, and sample from. So now what I would do here is load up Faceplant. I would grab this file here, control alt click, just drag it and drop it into here. Now I can go into here and start sampling different se sections of that sound file.
All right, let's move on to number nine here, and this is to use S-Layer. And with S-Layer, what I like to do is, with all the techniques that we've talked about so far, I like to uh, use S-Layer to kind of get the most out of all of my sounds that I've already used so far. All right, so here is S-Layer, and what I've done in here is I've just loaded a whole bunch of glitch sound effects that I've already designed, already created in my library using the exact techniques that I've shown so far. So this is gonna help you to take it uh, a step further and, and bring more life and more layers into your sound and, and just make them sound a lot fuller. So here we go. I'm just gonna randomize all the parameters and see what sounds we can get out of S-Layer. All right, so you can get some really cool sounds just like that. Another thing you can do is turn on all of these effects into here and randomize all these effects. Now you're just gonna get a whole bunch of new kind of sounds. So that is one technique that you can use to get the most out of your sounds and to, and to just get generate even more from what you've already created so far. All right, like I said at the beginning of the video, I was gonna show you a bonus technique and here it is. This is another little uh, bonus technique to get the most out of your sounds and um, this is it right here. So um, what I like to do is with the sounds I've already created, already designed, I've already exported them into folders, I like to bring them back into my session here and kind of uh, separate them a little bit. So here I have some glitchy sounds and I've separated it by about, I think it was uh, 0.2 uh, seconds and I did some more on this track here, some more on this track and a few more on this track here. So these are all kind of haphazardly placed around. There's no rhyme or reason. I kind of want them to be all uh, a bit randomized because I want them to be able to kind of interplay between each other and see what kind of effects I can get from that. So what I would do now is I would grab like uh, these sounds here, like this. Now I would export this this region here inside of here uh, as one big sample file. And then what I would do is I would then export it and then import it back into a sampler here. And that's what I have here. And now into here, I can now regenerate, create even more sound effects, sample more sound effects from what I've already created um, using that sound file. So now I get kind of the interplay of all of these different sounds and I can get some more crazy and more uh, full bodied sounds. All right, so I hope you found that useful and valuable and hopefully you learned something new or maybe something piqued your interest that maybe you wanna try out. All right, if you like this video, I think you'll like another one I made about creating glitch sound effects. I'll make sure to put it in the cards above right here. And that's it for now. If you have any comments, leave it down below. And if not, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.